Hello everybody, we are back here on the Hunter Call of the Wild. Today we are going to be starting a brand new series and you guys have been wanting me to do something like this for a little while. We are going to be starting a fresh account and going through the leveling process, trying to get as many trophies as we possibly can, giving you guys tips and tricks along the way, and overall just seeing how well we can do and how much we've learned since we started playing Call of the Wild quite a few years ago. Because there is definitely so much more that I know about the game now than when I first started playing and I definitely want to kind of share all of that with you guys as well as just seeing how many trophies we can possibly get before I hit level 60. I'm also going to base this series very heavily off of what you guys want me to do in future episodes so I'm going to be putting out polls as often as I can to see what you guys really want to see me do in this series. This is truly going to be a series where everything that we do in it is shaped by what you guys say and quite a few of you have wanted me to primarily focus on getting as many diamonds and rares as possible and obviously great ones if we can find one but I'm not really going to focus on great ones in this series because that is a little bit more of a later game type of grind. We're going to focus on some of the other stuff first and then maybe towards the end of this series we'll start working on great ones. But anyway, without further ado, let's uh, real quickly, just quick, new game, there we go. I, I said quick instead of click, but you guys get the picture. We have restarted our account here on Call of the Wild. And don't worry, this is not my main account. This is a second account for Call of the Wild. I have one on Steam and one on Epic Games. This is the Epic Games account. So all of my regular account stuff is still there. So just wanted to real quickly clear that up. Don't worry about it. That account is still fine. This is a completely different account right here. So let's go with Remy Warren and uh, let's start out on Leighton Lakes since the majority of people will be starting out on that map. So we will be skipping the majority of uh, cutscenes and stuff like that in the dialogue relating to missions because let's be honest, most of that stuff is not exactly exciting to watch and most of you will see that anyway whenever you do your playthrough. So we're going to skip over all that in this series just to uh, kind of save time. But there is our first kill of this brand new account, a Blacktail Deer Doe. And she really did not run too far, just a, a few yards to be honest, or a you few meters. You want to get your bearings. There are lookout points spread out all over the reserve. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to turn Doc down. He is incredibly loud, so yeah, it's a bit of a problem. Let's just uh, move on. That's our first kill of this brand new account, and a uh, great little single lung shot there. All right, so we unlocked our very first lookout tower as well as our very first outpost and went ahead and changed the time to whitetail time. I would have wanted to go to blacktail time personally, but unfortunately we have to do whitetail time because I don't have all the money in the world and blacktail drink kind of close tonight and I didn't want to have to reset the time once again. So we're going to go kill a few whitetail deer and then attempt to uh, go find some blacktail or something along the lines of that since we'll probably do better on them. Deer species will be much easier for us to kill at the moment because the 243 is not super strong, especially when you're using the soft points. And that's what we're going to have to start with. So we're going to have to take down stuff that is much easier to take down. Unfortunately, as stuff like elk and moose, not super easy to take down with the 243. So we are going to have to focus on some of the smaller stuff first. But speaking of whitetail deer, there is one right in front of us. Let's go ahead and get lined up on it and take the shot. That right there should be the end of him and our very first non-starter uh, animal kill. And I did have to go ahead and turn off the mission system because it just kept interrupting me every time I was trying to say something. So I did disable missions, but I do recommend having them on when you first start. That way you guys can get a little bit of extra money and XP as you go. But let's go ahead and claim this whitetail deer right here, 179.43, and that is going to net us 651 cash. Now, whenever you are aiming at a whitetail deer, you really want to aim for right behind this crease because that is where the lung is going to be and it's going to really help you get them down super quick. I can't stress this enough, when you're first starting and all you have is the soft point ammunition, you have to aim for them when they're broadside, otherwise you're going to have a lot of troubles getting to the vitals. If you try to take a frontal shot with a soft point, good luck actually hitting anything that's going to kill them. So be sure to wait for them to go broadside and then take your shot right behind the shoulder, right about here, and you should do perfectly fine. Once you get the polymer tip bullets, things will open up a little bit more to where you can take some different angles, but at least when you're starting off with the soft points, focus on broadside shots. 
And speaking of the 243 polymer tip bullet, we just unlocked it. So next time we go back to the outpost, we are going to be purchasing some of those because they will help us out quite a lot. We have now made it to our second outpost. Let's go ahead and unlock this real quickly, and then we will purchase some of the polymer tip bullets and talk a little bit about the DLCs that we will be using during this playthrough and kind of how we will introduce DLCs. So I've decided we're not going to use the DLCs for the first little bit because I don't want to immediately go into it with a bunch of stuff that not everybody that starts playing the game is going to have, though we are primarily doing this series to see how many diamonds we can get throughout it. I also want to make it relevant to those of you that are new to the game, so we're not going to use DLCs until we level up a little bit. Essentially, we're going to unlock the equivalent uh, calibers or uh, range of classes for different weapons and then start introducing DLC weapons that are similar. Uh, that way, you're not at a disadvantage if you don't have them. Though there is two DLCs that we will be using from the get-go, and that is the ATV DLC as well as the tent DLC, because those you get for free on console. Unfortunately, PC has to play for them, but it still doesn't change the fact that most people will have those, so we will end up using them. But let's go ahead and purchase some of the polymer bullets. And, uh, yeah, I believe we also get the 270. Yeah, we do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and equip the 270 as well and check to see how much we have to wait till we can get the 270 poly tips. So we gotta get to a thousand rifle score, okay. So that's not exactly gonna be a fast thing, but I think we can do it today. And be sure after you purchase stuff to go to your storage locker and put it into your inventory or else you will just not have it. So yeah, that is uh, something you gotta make sure that you're doing. Let's get a tent in here as well. I don't really need the scent eliminator. For the most part, it's not as effective as you would expect. So we're going to go ahead and ditch that as well as a bunch of other stuff. That way we can fit our tent. Let's uh, get rid of the handgun because I don't really use handguns. I don't recommend them early on either. And uh, now that we got all that situated, let's get out and start trying to find ourselves some more whitetail deer to get a little bit more money. So for the white-tailed deer, we will be searching in Balmont. This Balmont swamp area is really good. There's usually quite a bit of them here, and this should be a great place to find some to get a little bit of cash built up. Now, I probably should have talked about this before we actually started hunting, but one of the most important things for you to do when you first start playing Call of the Wild and right before you head out for your first hunt is to look up online what the different drink times are for the animals that you want to go after. Now, I definitely recommend just going to Google and searching up animal drink zone times for Call of the Wild because it will tell you exactly what time you need to change your in-game time to to find the animal that you want to be hunting. Now, drink zones are by far the easiest zones to hunt because it makes the animals super visible because you know they're going to be around water. You can check out channels like ProXCK who do hotspot guides so you can see exactly where on the map you'll be able to find those animals and then just look up what their drink time is and search those areas during that time and you should have plenty of luck finding the species that you are wanting to hunt. And for us, it's the white tail, so we're hunting between 8.30 and 12.30 and we are going to be searching the left half of the map because that is where they are located. And also, once you uh, purchase those polymer tips that we bought, uh, be sure to actually put them in your gun. Unlike Scarecrow here, I forgot to put them in my gun, but uh, yeah, now we now we got them in the gun. So this next one should go down a little bit quicker. When you're tracking, these tracking cones will kind of point in the direction that you need to be going to find the animal that you shot. Uh, whenever you see something above a very low bleed rate, that typically means that you got a good shot or at least a shot that will kill it. So it's worth tracking it down. If it says very low, there's a good chance that it was not a good shot and you'll probably be tracking it for quite a while, so keep that in mind. But there is our second whitetail deer of the day. This one about the same score as the other one scoring silver. Now when you are playing the Hunter Call of the Wild, you want to make sure that your ammo ends up matching the class of the animal you kill. You'll see right here, whitetail deer are class 4. This will also show up when you spot them, so look for that if you want to know what type of ammo you need to be using on it. And then what you can do after we get our little level up here is you can go to the ammo and you can see exactly what classes it's recommended for. You'll see at the bottom right it says recommended classes 2 to 6, which means we can shoot any animals between level 2 or class 2 and class 6. And whitetail deer fall right in the middle at class 4, so it is an ethical caliber to use on them. If you don't get the proper ammo on an animal, you will lose a metal rank, so keep that in mind when you're hunting. 
Now, I know by now a lot of you that are, aren't new to the game are probably thinking, okay, when are we going to get to the diamond hunting part of the series? And we will get to that eventually. This first episode is primarily going to be the basics for those that are new to the game and also seeing what we can find in our first uh, couple hours of hunting here. But eventually we will start focusing very heavily on trying to find diamonds and rares and leveling up our character as quickly as we can. But I figured it would be good to go through the basics first. So whenever you get these skills and perk points from leveling up, you're going to want to go to skill to start out and do locate tracks because this is going to be something you will need to work on to get to later uh, skills like improvised blind which will allow you to hide in bushes and stuff like soft feet which makes you run quieter uh, things like track knowledge which is very important in knowing what type of size of animal you're tracking and stuff like only happy when it rains which decreases your visibility in foggy and rainy weather Endurance is also very important and we will be working towards that as well. Disturb vegetation is another necessity in my opinion. It will help you discover rare fur types whenever you're picking up a disturbed vegetation tracks which unlock when you unlock this skill. And then in the ambusher category you're going to want to go for stuff like spotting knowledge, uh, sight spotting, and if you want to you can go for pack mule but unfortunately you won't have enough points to get disturbed vegetation and pack mule so you'll have to go for one or the other so decide what you want to work towards before you start adding in points that way you kind of know the amount of points that you're going to need to get there but another thing that is pretty good in this little section right here uh, we talked about spotting knowledge a little bit but this is one of my favorite perks it tells you uh, or favorite skills it tells you exactly the, the score estimates the weight estimates and stuff like that of all of the animals that you're spotting and this one is super helpful because it lets you spot animals through your scope so sight spotting is another great option now that we put in our skill let's go to the perks there are so many good perks to go for I wouldn't worry about any of the bow hunting ones Unless you really are an avid bow hunter, because most of them aren't super useful, but every other category has a very useful perk. Uh, this one in Shotguns Recoil Management is one of the best perks in the game if you intend to uh, take quick follow-up shots. Fast shouldering also is also great, it helps you aim quicker. Body control is great because it helps your sight align quicker after you turn your scope. And uh, Both Eyes Open is kind of just one of those prerequisite perks that you have to get in order to get these three here. Now we've got the handgun perks, uh, sprint and load is one that you'll need to go with and unfortunately to get to one of the more important perks you will have to kind of waste some on stuff like this. I would recommend going into survival instinct because it does uh, decrease the amount of damage you take from attacks after landing a shot on, a, on an aggressive animal so that is a pretty good one but it's not really the main thing we're working on here. You're going to be wanting to get up to lightning hands because this will decrease the reload time of all weapons and it is so good. It will help so much during grinds where you're trying to quickly reload and be able to take down more animals quicker and uh, then last of all we got the rifles category which is probably got some of the most important ones of all muscle memory steady hands breath control zeroing those are all perks that you are really gonna work want to work for and I'd say that breath control and steady hands are probably two of the most important for accurate shots and then zeroing is very nice if you want to not have to compensate for the drop as much but to start things off, we're going to go with Muscle Memory a Tier 1. That way we can ready our next shot without leaving Aim Mode, which is going to be very helpful so we can keep eyes on the target after we shoot it. You know we're off to a pretty good start today finding some pretty decent whitetail deer. We're going to move up a little bit closer just so we can ensure that we will get this shot because that's a pretty good looking level 2 buck, most likely within the max weight estimate as well. We will attempt to get more than one here, but I highly doubt we will be able to get more than one shot off before they completely run out of this area. But let's at least try, so let's get this guy down. Now, if we can, we will get that guy as well. I don't know if he's going to die from that, but we did get a shot into him, so provided we had vitals, we should have two deer down. There is the first buck that we shot. This is definitely our biggest one of the day, 210.19. And we got a beautiful double lung shot there as well. This is the massive difference between the poly tips and the soft points. Look at the extra penetration so that we could actually get both lungs. It is so much better than soft points. So I definitely recommend working up to poly tips as quick as you can. And we did get vitals on the second deer as well. So we should have another one down very close to this area. It looks like we probably got a single lung, so it might take a little bit longer for it to die, but it will still go down. And there he is, slightly farther away than the other one, but still not all that far from where we shot it. That was a single lung right there. 
So it does go to show that just getting that one simple perk that makes it so you don't have to exit scope mode to rack another round into the chamber really does uh, help wonders when it comes to getting a follow-up shot on a second deer in the herd. Another quick tip I can give you guys for searching new maps that you haven't been on before is if you see a path like this and then it just completely stops, there's a good chance that there might be an outpost there and that is the case with this location. So we're gonna go claim this outpost real quickly before we continue our hunt. And here we are at the brand new outpost. Let's go ahead and unlock it. This will be the third outpost that we have found here on this new account since we started this playthrough. So what we are going to do now is go ahead and reset the time. We're going to put it to Blacktail Drink Time, which starts at around 16 or 1630, uh, depending on the individual herd. And we'll go clear to about 2030, if I'm not mistaken. So we're going to go ahead and do 1631. And then we're going to move over to one of the lakes that can have Blacktail, which is going to be this one over here. I believe this is Balmont Lake. It's a phenomenal spot for Blacktail Deer. And for the most part, Blacktail Deer are only on the right side of the map. So all of these lakes on the right side, you'll be able to find them, as well as the uh, right half of this lake and this river section here. I believe you can also find them along this right shoreline as well, though I haven't actually checked it since they did a redistribution of the locations of all of the animals a couple months ago. And normally I don't recommend shooting does, but because we're so early on in this account, I'd say just shoot pretty much anything that you can get a shot at, especially when you are within your first like 15 levels of starting a game here in Call of the Wild, because early on, Every little bit of XP and money is super helpful, so just take the shot on pretty much anything that you can find. And also, whenever you find these, be sure to pick up these little sheds because they also do award you a little bit of XP. And like I said, every little bit helps early on. There is our little doe. Let's just uh, keep walking this way and grab her as we go by. A double lung shot took her down super quick. We got a couple more over here, and one of them is a buck, so we're going to go over there and take them down next. As something that I also do want to note, though I do recommend shooting pretty much everything when you first start out, if you find a zone like this where there is only two animals, be careful because shooting one animal out of a two animal zone will make it so that that one does not respawn in the same zone. And this works with pretty much any species. Anytime a zone gets shot down to only one animal, it will stop getting respawns and instead those respawns will go to other zones or create brand new ones. So keep that in mind when you're hunting. If you like a specific zone, never shoot it down to one animal. And also be aware that multiple herds can use the same zone. And if you have a situation like that, you got to be careful that you don't shoot either of those herds down to one animal. Or else you could get the same result where they just don't repopulate that zone. But let's get this buck down real quickly. This is a weird angle, but we have poly tips now, so it should work out. And like I was saying, because we're early on and I don't really care about this zone, we're going to shoot both of them because we need the cash desperately. So we did end up getting good shots on both of them. I think this is probably single lung. Yeah, it is. But that is going to be our first black tail buck and almost a thousand cash because we managed to get uh, the majority of the harvest checks there. The only thing that didn't uh, get full is the quick kill. So we lost a little bit of money for that. But for the most part, black tail are going to give you enough money early on to kind of get your basic equipment and that's kind of why I always go to them. They're easy to kill and they give a decent bit of cash early on. Another thing that I didn't really talk about yet in this video is uh, what you're going to be looking for when it comes to animals. Now, each animal does have a max level that they can reach. Uh, for the black tailed deer, that is going to be level five and level five will give you the highest chance of getting yourself a diamond medal, which is the highest medal that you can get besides the great ones, which we will talk about later on in the series. But for now, let's just focus on this. So in order to get a diamond rating, uh, for most species, it will need to be a male. Uh, in most cases, it will need to be max level, though on rare occasions, one level below can make diamond as well. But the main thing you're looking for is these scores right here. So in order to get a diamond blacktail, you'll see that you need a 177.58 score. So if you meet the requirements, as well as getting all of these harvest checks passed, then you will get the diamond medal. And that is what a lot of players strive for in this game is the diamonds, the rare fur variations, and the great ones. So that is something that you guys will want to make sure that you're always doing is uh, checking the scores, making sure that you are getting all the harvest checks, and that'll give you the best chances of getting yourself some diamonds as well as hunting drink zones. So you'll see right here we use the proper ammo for this animal, which relates to the classes that I talked about earlier. We shot it two times or less 
Uh, we didn't shoot the trophy organ, which in most cases would be the head, so no headshots. Uh, we hit one vital organ or more, which that would be the lungs. So this is actually a really good example of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, this is multiple herds using one drink zone. Blacktail typically aren't in herds bigger than five, and typically they don't go to six, so from that we know that this is either going to be a two groups of three, or it could very well be a group of four and then a group of two. So there's a lot of different combinations it could be, but nonetheless, we need to be careful not to completely delete this zone by shooting too many of the deer. Which actually brings me to the next thing, and that is the hunting pressure. So you're gonna want to make sure that you watch the amount of hunting pressure that you get. This right here would be stage one hunting pressure. You can see it's kind of light. That's not that big of a deal, but the more you shoot, the more hunting pressure will get there. Or I should say the more animals you kill, the more hunting pressure you will get. And if you get to stage four hunting pressure, which is from killing four animals, any zones that are within that range will be deleted. So keep that in mind. Try not to shoot more than three animals in an area. And uh, if it gets too pink, then hunt somewhere else until the hunting pressure fades away. So I think we're going to plop down the tent right here next to these amazing blacktail zones that we have found. And we're going to go ahead and end the episode here. Stay tuned, the future episodes will definitely have a lot more diamond hunting and more tips related to getting diamonds and rares and just more diamond and rare hunting in general. But at least for this first episode, I wanted to make it as filled with tips and tricks as I possibly could for those of you that may be new to the game, as we do have a brand new update coming shortly that I'm sure will be bringing in a ton of new players to the game. So I hope this was helpful. We're going to do a lot more with this series and it's very much going to be shaped by what you guys want me to do in it. So leave a comment down below on what we should do in episodes two, three, four, whatever episode you might want me to do something in. Just let me know what you want to see in this series and I will try to do as much of what you guys want me to. But anyway, thank you all for watching and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.